And we're back with more of Super Adventure Island 2, and in the last episode we took care of business in Haya Haya Island, and then unfortunately my footage got corrupted. So I'm just recording this uh, post-commentary and prepared to, or I'm preparing to uh, head over to Boa Boa Island, which is going to be the Fire Island. But we gotta take care of a few things first, and one of those things is first we had to get the item in order to open up the island in the first place. And then I think we had to get a couple more things after that. And one of them is, uh, I think like the ring and then, the, or the sun ring. Yeah, that's what we need to get access to the island. And then the other one was the magic wand, which is finally gonna be putting those green bottles to good use. So let's see, of course the first thing I'm doing is just lowering the gates. Which is one thing I did uh, notice while watching footage of this video was that I mean, the game does a pretty good job of minimizing backtracking. At least you don't have overly exaggerated world maps like in other games. And then right here is where we're gonna find the uh, magic wand. And then really here's just a little long-winded explanation. And see, uh, what you do is that you need to find uh, more magic bottles and then the more you find the more spells you get access to. So this is actually kind of an improvement from Zelda 2 where you had to do like specific tasks in order to get access to those items. But then here all you have to do is just find uh, magic bottles. Which in itself is not really that easy but it is something I do like doing. And that first one we got was the feather and what that allows us to do is uh, it allows us to uh, warp to the beginning of the stage. So it cuts out backtracking and it also uh, get you to where you need to go early on, or right away. And this here is the sun ring, and that's something we're going to need in order to access uh, Boa Boa Island. I also like the little pyramid aesthetic there. Oh, don't worry, we'll be seeing that again pretty soon. But really all I'm doing is just going to backtrack here. And then right on cue. But anyway, uh, here we are, back at Boa Boa Island. So let's just go ahead and get this started. I also like the music in this place. I mean, the atmosphere is pretty fun, too. I mean, like, the atmosphere of this whole place is pretty well set up. And then after using the sun ring, eventually you just set off a volcano. That's like, a pretty cool way to open up an island, if I do say so myself. But anyway, a lot has happened since, uh, the last time I uploaded something. And, uh, fortunately, or hopefully, fair use is going to be something that's going to be talked about more. And, unfortunately, with that whole thing, now you have people that are big, but not necessarily superstars on YouTube that are just losing their channels for no real good reason. I mean, that wouldn't be an issue with, like, copyright claim and all those other things if you had, like, a better system. But I mean, the biggest problem is that the system essentially bends over for the claimants and gives the content creator no real means of defending themselves until it's too late. Unfortunately, the service is just completely non-existent. I think uh, Channel Awesome talked about it when they said that they had to send emails for like three straight weeks and then it took them making like a certain video. I think it was what the hell YouTube in order for them to actually get a response. And also here, all we gotta do is run from a boulder. But yeah, getting back to that, I mean, Brain Scratch had a problem too with uh, somebody putting a claim on their video. And she even tried to retract it, but then for some reason YouTube just wasn't having it. And then it just wouldn't do that, and then they had to make a video called YouTube Get Your Shit Together. And it was a pretty annoying thing to deal with. But either way, I think the solution, I mean, it's not really that good of a solution, but I think for the claim, or the people making the claims, you do have people that are essentially like third-party people that are paid to claim other people's stuff. And then you've also got other people that are essentially scamming the system by claiming stuff and then claiming monetization from other people's videos. Which, if you ask me, is a big load of shit, but... Unfortunately, that's just what some people like to do. 
I mean, that's just what happened when you play in a broken system. But anyway, now we got the ice armor, at least we're gonna take a little bit less damage here. Which is one thing I do like about the armors in this game, is that um, they are somewhat situational, but at least uh, some of them play better than others in certain terrain. And then you're gonna see pretty soon when we get the aqua armor, that's gonna be pretty useful for swimming. Let's see, uh... But I think one thing that could be done is, for one thing, having a panel of people and... I mean, you do have to have actual people look at these videos to say, okay, this is not a good flame, and then this is not a valid flame. And then have some kind of repercussion for people making false claims. But I think if you had something much more important than just a name and an email address, then you're gonna have, uh, or reduced claims in that way. I mean, it shouldn't be as severe as, say, a uh, social security number or something like that, but if you did something that severe, like a passport number, you wouldn't believe the number of claims that would go down. But unfortunately, uh, well, then again, if they could also get arrested for stealing money from people, I mean, that could be used too. But anyway, now that we found the second magic bottle, uh, we've gotten access to the recovery spell, which is a useful uh, way of getting some health back. And that's also the shrine we gotta go to to finish the game. Let's see, uh, getting back to the main gimmick of the stage, what we're doing is that we gotta, uh, well, besides ride a bunch of platforms, is, um, let's see, we gotta unlock this one area. Well, first thing we gotta do is deactivate the sun switch, and then unlock the area. And we do that by going to those places where, or that was getting blocked off by those sun blocks. And then we gotta, uh, activate switches in order to, uh, activate doors. I guess remove doors. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going for. I was trying to get my ice shield going. Which is gonna be pretty useful for at least deflecting fireballs, and then you don't have to take any pot shots. And I don't think I need to... I think it was also... In my previous commentary, I said something about the Fine Brothers and... You know, the bullshit they tried to pull. But anyway, I think they showed their true face, and at the end of the day, they did get what they deserved. I mean, their credibility is pretty much shot to hell. And also, uh... I mean, they'll still go on with their lives, but at the end of the day, I think there are going to be plenty of people that won't forget this. And unfortunately, it does set a pretty dangerous precedent, because if they don't do it, what's to stop somebody else from doing it? I mean, this is just a hypothetical, but if Diabetes wants to trademark Let's Play, and then all of a sudden just make a bunch of money off of everybody else doing Let's Plays, I don't know if he ever got that idea. I don't want to give him ideas. But anyway, uh, some of these doors are fate, or not really doors, but some of these things just lead to enemies. And there are five of these things we had to deactivate. And then some of the cuts I made were just uh, me editing out just a few seconds of just jumping up and down just to get back to the top. Because there is quite a bit of backtracking that does go on in this stage. And then I think here there's a hot spring. So at least we got that going for us. So let's see, uh... Yeah, I don't think there's really a whole lot else going on on the internet today, but... Then again, there is a lot of stuff with the election here in the U.S. But then, of course, that's gonna be decided pretty soon, I think. But I think I already made up my mind with what I want to do. Anyway, speaking of warps, uh, or speaking of things, uh, here's a warp, and this is actually gonna be the gate that, uh, leads us back to Poka Poka Island. So, really what I'm here to do is get the ice sword, which was actually hidden behind the sunblocks. So then, uh, we'll just jump cut there. So anyway, uh, yeah, remember this treasure chest? 
Anyway, there's the ice sword. So now we've got better weaponry. And then we just gotta uh, backtrack here. But we can just do this the fun way and use the feather. Might as well show this off while I can. And you just go to the beginning of the stage. Always fun. And then I don't remember how much of this I left. Okay, anyway, now that all the switches have been pressed and that we uh, got access to the ice sword, we can just go to the last section here. Unfortunately, these jumps are pretty tricky with uh, the moles and, you know, this just pretty bastardized enemy placement. But at least uh, we have some means of doing something about it. Or at least we also have some means of healing too, which is always good. Anyway, the spells in this game are actually pretty awesome, and then hopefully I'll be able to show off all of them. Of course, I do have to get back to playing this. Even though I think uh, the next episode is actually going to be the really fun one. Where I do get to go through the next island, and then the episode after that gets to be the gambling episode. And then that's going to be even more fun. But anyway, uh, here we are at the boss, and... Let's see, the boss is, uh... Kind of like this jet turtle thing. Well, this is a pretty neat concept. It's actually pretty similar to the uh, boss in Wily 2 and Mega Man 7. But anyway, all I'm doing is just stabbing this guy in the head. No big deal. And then, uh, right here when he uh, shoots off three turtles, just jump over him. Uh, it's actually a really simple pattern, but this does go on for about four times, and I did find myself getting kind of bored when I was actually fighting this thing. I also like this effect. Of course, this was Super Nintendo in 1994, I think. Or 95, I forget. But anyway, uh, the turtles themselves aren't really too tough to avoid. And then right when I say that, I end up getting hit. But then again, I think it is kind of random as to uh, where they go. And then here I'm just waiting for the boss. And then, unfortunately, this does get kind of tedious because he goes through four of these cycles and you only get, like, one real window to hit him. And then you just have to go through this over and over again. Well, not really over and over again, just four more times. But, yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty much his boss in a nutshell. I mean, there really isn't a whole lot else to see. So, let's see, for the rest of this... Um... Yeah, hopefully I can get to recording something this Friday. Or maybe this weekend. Of course, that's what happens when you have tests and then you have, uh... Papers and all that other fun stuff. Let's see, uh... Yeah, this is the third cycle. So I think we just got this and then one more to go. I also like this, uh, jumping stab that, uh, actually works out. Okay, never mind. I guess I was, uh, off by a cycle. But anyway, now that we got the Aqua Stone and we've, uh, unlocked access to the next island, I think it's, a uh, Puka Puka Island. I think that might be the name of it. So now you get another, uh, little exchange between Tina and Higgins. Which is actually something I actually thought was a pretty clever way of telling the story. Except the only problem is you can never tell, like, who's talking and who's not. But anyway, all with all that said, uh... Let's see, I will see you next time for part four.